so uh, we're going to do an example next. Uh, one more example of computing Euler approximations by hand. And we're actually going to return to that uh, logistic example that we were doing before that um, dn dt equal rn times k minus n. I plugged in numbers for r and k because we can't like compute things without numbers. Um, or we can, but none of you would want to watch the video. Um, and so for this specific example, when we try to write things using the like variables and notation from our steps. Um, we want it kind of in terms of x and y. So for us, the thing that we were calling x is now t, and the thing that we were calling y is now n. And our f of xy is going to be um, 0 0.4 times n times 0 0.5 minus n. Um, that's the right-hand side of our differential equation right there. And the initial condition that we start from, x0, y0, is 0, 0 0.1. So we start at uh, x or t equals 0, and then we start at y or um, n equal to 0 0.1. And in this case, what we're going to do is, using step size 1, we want to find or approximate n of 3. So in this case, that means h equals 1. And we want to stop at x equal to 3. Um, or it's t, but I'm going to use x and y in the steps because that's what we're used to from the Euler approximation um, outline. <coughs> so we always start with what is our x0 and what is our y0. Um, so x0 is 0, y0 is 0 0.1. And I'm going to follow that advice that I gave of doing all my x steps first, just to know how many I'm going to need. So x1 would be x0 plus h, so 0 plus 1, that's x0 plus h, or 1. Uh, x2 is going to be x1 plus h, so that's 1 plus 1 is 2. And x3 is going to be x2 plus h. So that's going to be 2 was my previous x value. Plus 1 gives me um, 3. And then at that point, I've reached the value that I want to stop at, x equal 3. And so I'm, I'm done there. And so now I know that I'm going to have to calculate y1, y2, y3. Um, and so I think I'm actually going to scooch this y0 over on the page a little bit, just because um, these equations might get a little bit long. So y1 is given by y0 plus h times f of x0, y0. So uh, that's my previous y value, 0 0.1, plus my step size, 1, times f. That's this thing, but I plug in x0, y0. And in this example, we actually don't have x0. We only have to plug in y, um, or the n. So it's 0 0.4 times my previous value, which is 0 0.1, um, times 0 0.5 minus my previous value, which is 0 0.1. Um, and when you plug that into a calculator, you get 0 0.116. Then I go ahead and I do y2, which is going to be, now I look back at x1, y1. I take y1 plus h, f of x1, y1. So y1 was 0 0.116. H, at least, was 1, so that's nice. And then my f of x1, y1 is this, but everywhere I see n, i got to plug in 0 0.116. So it's 0 0.4 times 0 0.116 times 
times 0 0.5 minus 0 0.116. And when I plug that into the calculator, I get 0 0.1338176. Which is a lot. Um, when you all are doing this, like for your web work, um, be careful. Uh, rounding things off introduces error early on, and if you have to take a lot of steps, that can kind of compound. So if you can do like previous answer or something in your calculator, that's the way to do this. Um, instead of calling this like, okay, I guess that's 0.13 and plugging it in, sometimes it'll end up wrong if you do that. Then y3 is gonna be y2 plus h times f of x2 y2, which is 0 0.1338176 plus my step size one times that same function we've been going back to, but now I plug in that whole thing for n. So 0 0.4 times 0 0.1338176 times 0 0.5 minus, I thought I left enough room, but I didn't. Um, so I'm gonna scooch it all over. That. Um, and I'm gonna be honest, I didn't even plug that into a calculator. I was done once I had to write that many numbers all at once, but if you needed Y3 for your web work, you would plug it in. And the reason I chose to do this example is because I wanted to show you that um, this is quite tedious. Um, I want you to know how to calculate it by hand. I want you to know that this is a linear approximation, that it's super related to direction fields and things you learned in calculus. I want you to do it exactly once so you understand that. Um, but in practice, we actually use computers to solve this type of problem, and that's what we're going to do um, when you use Euler's method for your project. So in practice, we would use computers. Um, and I encourage you to do that. So we're gonna pause here and I'm gonna start the next video which is gonna be a, a spreadsheet demonstration of how we can use computers to do Euler's method for us.